Buy wisely. Buy for flavor. Buy Del Monte. Del Monte, the brand you trust for flavor in so many good foods. Time now for Rocky Jordan, brought to you by Del Monte Foods, the brand preferred by more women than any other line of canned fruits and vegetables in the world. Not far from the Mosque Sultan Hassan in Cairo stands the Café Tambourine, run by Rocky Jordan. The Café Tambourine, crowded with forgotten men, alive with the babble of many languages. For this is Cairo, where modern adventure and intrigue unfold against the backdrop of antiquity. Del Monte presents Rocky Jordan and this week's story, The Strange Death of Van Dorn. We'd handled a big crowd at the tambourine the night before. All I wanted that morning was peace and quiet. That's what I wanted. I wasn't opening till noon, but the place was already stifling from the heat of the day. So I went to the front door to let in some fresh air. First thing I saw after that was a big shiny police badge, followed by Sergeant Greco. Good morning, Mr. Jordan. Ah, sorry, Greco. We're not open yet. Do not be offensive. I have no desire for the nectar of the infidel. Then you're in the wrong place, aren't you? Most certainly not. You will please accompany me now. Uh, some other time, Greco. I'm busy. Mr. Jordan, it will interest you to know that I act under orders of the Captain Sabaya, who awaits you outside. He does, huh? Oh, yeah. Now, Mr. Jordan, shall we go? As long as Sam's asking. A most pleasant day, Jordan. Oh, why'd you trade your limousine in for a jeep, Sam? The nature of the journey demands it. You will drive, Greco. You command, Captain. What's it about, Sam? You would enjoy a ride into the hot desert, would you not? I'm sorry, it doesn't fit with my plan. But unfortunately, it would be necessary. That an order? Get in, Jordan. So I got in and we started out. Sam wasn't talking yet, and I couldn't figure it. Greco drove rapidly across town and north out the Heliopolis Road, then turned east through the hills and on into the sand dunes of the desert. Finally, up ahead, I made out several men standing in a group, all in police uniforms, their figures wavering in the desert heat. Greco steered the jeep up beside them to a stop, and we got out. They stepped respectfully back as Sam led me through to the center of the group, where the dead figure of a man lay sprawled on the burning sand. Jordan, you will look at him carefully. I've already seen enough. You know him, then? Not his name. He's been in the tambourine a few times. When last? As a matter of fact, just last night. Came in with a girl. Mm. You would recognize her if you saw her again? Yeah, I think so. Real blonde, round face, attractive. I didn't get her name either. She hadn't been in before. And you know absolutely nothing more of this man? Only that he was Dutch. Judging from his accent, that's all. Very well. Oh, it's hot. Now, how do I fit in, Sam? The investigating officers found only a pack of tambourine matches in his pocket, so I decided to drive you out for possible identification. Why to this forsaken place? Look here, I am not enjoying the heat any more than you. Could have waited till you got him back to Cairo. I prefer to act quickly in these matters. How did it happen? Well, we are not yet sure. Small bruise on his forehead, that's all I see. Uh, Captain Sabai. Yes, Greco. Uh, for the bay, we should say word with you about his passport. Uh, pardon me, Jordan. Please wait here a moment with Greco. Uh, you appear most ill at ease, Mr. Jordan. There's nothing a cold beer wouldn't cure. Join me? So carefully your eyes avoid the man who lies in the sand. You, uh, want the truth, Greco? <laughs> I could hardly expect it from such as you. I dragged him out here with my own hands and shot him. What is that you... God, you insolent tongue, Mr. Jordan. All right, supposing we both break it off, huh? You will soon learn how to speak with respect to the police. Greco, Greco, enough of this. Assist the men with the body. At once, Captain. Oh, this is most unusual, most unusual. Sam, you better find some shade. It is not the heat this time, Jordan. For the bay, the medical examiner has just informed me how the man died. Yeah? How? He froze to death. Sam said it with a straight face. 
And Forty Bay stuck to his report. There wasn't any argument. The man found in the burning sand had died by freezing. Well, our trip back into Cairo was as silent as when we'd come. They dropped me off at the tambourine without saying a word. I sat down at my desk for a while trying to figure it out, but it didn't get me anywhere. Besides, I had a business appointment across town, so I headed through the office for my car parked in the alley. I just got out the door. No, Mr. Jordan. No, no, don't move. <clears throat> don't move at all. It was a little American guy with horn-rimmed glasses and hair parted in the middle. He stood on one foot and then the other, and he waved a black gun. Have a care, I tell you, Mr. Jordan. <clears throat> I have a pistol. Yes, I'm looking at it. And it might very well go off right in your face. Yes, right in your face. Uh, look, why not try settling down? Mr. Jordan, the Cairo police picked you up in front of your cafe this morning. Oh, did they? They then took you into the desert. Now, <clears throat> I want you to tell me exactly what they found there. A lot of sand. Well, stop it, Mr. Jordan. On the dead body. Did they find something <clears throat> unusual? Like what? Well, you would know if they found anything. Only one thing was unusual. He'd frozen to death. Is that what you want? No, no, no. But you know how it happened. Huh? I do not. I do not even know that I believe you. That suits me. Now, why the excitement? Did uh, you and he have something on? Important dealings? <clears throat> yes. Only uh, something went wrong. Well, our business was not consummated, if that's what you mean. Well, tell me some more. What was his name? Now, don't badger me, Mr. Jordan. <clears throat> I ask you to explain why you didn't know him, <clears throat> and yet you identified him. Only from seeing him in the tambourine last night. What was he doing there? Entertaining. Entertaining who? Who was with him, Mr. Jordan? Well, I got a hunch it wasn't his sister. Green-eyed, platinum blonde. <sighs> Sandra. All at once, he was darting up the alley to a side street. I held it till I saw a blue Fiat car roar past the alley entrance and heard it turn down the Sharia Farida. Then I made it to my car, went out of the alley on two wheels, swung onto the Sharia, then stepped it up. Pretty soon, I spotted the blue Fiat a couple of blocks ahead. Kept on its trail till it slowed and pulled up at a small hotel near the river where he got out and went in. I parked and slipped up to the front window in time to see him speak to the desk clerk. I figured he was asking for Sandra. But the clerk shook his head and the little man came back outside and got in his car to wait. I went to the corner and bribed a newsboy to get the clerk outside away from his desk. Then I got around the back way, waited till the clerk was gone. Then I moved to the desk and looked through the registration cards till I found the name I wanted. Sandra Dubois, room 309. I scooted upstairs and rapped at 309. First, there was no answer, so I tried again. Who is it? Hey, desk clerk, lady. I got a message. Wait. Wait. Oh, no, you're not the clerk. Oh, but you've seen me before. Oh, how did you get up here? I left all this with the desk clerk. I was not in for anyone. Why? You hiding from something, Sandra? Who are you? What do you want? The name is Jordan. You were at my cafe tambourine last night with a man. Is that right? Maybe I was. And maybe I was not. Uh, sure, you're not the type of guy who forgets. If that is meant as a compliment, you are wasting your time. Can you not see I am packing as quickly as possible? I will get out of Egypt. Is not that what you want? Not me, lady. Did somebody else say that? He was here only an hour ago with his threats. Do not pretend you do not know. Who? The uh, little fellow sitting out there in the Fiat? What? No. He was heavy with a completely bald head. Did you get his name? Arnold Krieg. He gave me enough money to get out, and I'm taking his advice right now. Why does Krieg want you out of Egypt? Why should I tell you? Because I don't like getting threats any more than you do. Now look, maybe we can help each other, Sandra. At least you're not holding a gun. No, I don't carry one. Who is the fellow out there in the Fiat? His name is Hagen. Milt Hagen. Did he have a deal on with the man you went to the tambourine with last night? Yes. I, I do not know what it was. He did not tell me. Well, let's have his name. Van Dorn. It was only a date. Oh, sure. After you two left the tambourine last night, where'd you go? He only brought me back to the hotel, and then he left. Did you see him after that? I watched him from the window there, walking down the street, and then a truck pulled up alongside of him. Uh, go on. Two men jumped out, grabbed him, and dumped him into the truck. That is the last time I saw him. You saw way too much. Who were the men who picked him up? I recognized only one of them. The bald-headed man, Arnold Krieg. Did he have business with Van Dorn, too? I... I think he was trying, but Van Dorn would have nothing to do with him. But believe me, I do not know what it is about at all. Sandra, do you know what happened to Van Dorn? No, Mr. Jordan. Do you? The police found him out in the desert this morning. 
dead. Oh, no. Oh, my poor Patel. He'd frozen to death. Oh, but that is not possible. Yeah, it happens to be true. Now, listen, Sandra. If you know anything else, you'd better tell me. Oh, but that is all I know. I saw Krieg dump him into a truck. A yellow truck with a red triangle on the side. That is everything. Oh, come on, Sandra. We're going to tell this to the police. Oh, no, I'm not getting out of town right now. Before something happens to me. No, no, you're not. You're coming with me to Captain Sabaya. Please, Mr. John, let me go. You are taking her no place. <gasps> we hadn't seen him come in the open door, and he was standing right behind us. It was the man who had threatened Sandra earlier. He was built like a wrestler, and there wasn't a hair on his head. The girl will do only what I told her to do. I was going to, please. You can see. I was packing. I see everything quite clearly. Mr. Jordan takes untimely interest, but he alters nothing. Yeah, it must have been quite a deal you had with Van Dorn. Enough to kill him. A very big deal, Mr. Jordan, and I don't want it upset by anyone. That's why the gun, huh? No. I am a generous man. I give everyone a break, but only once. So what's your plan? There's a chartered plane warmed up and waiting for this girl. Fortunately, there is space for another passenger. You, Jordan. Now, let me get this straight. You quite understand me. I am having you both flown out of Egypt. Del Monte Foods is presenting tonight's adventure with Rocky Jordan. Fresh tasting, natural tasting, and refreshing. Fresh tasting, natural tasting, and refreshing. There in just six words is the whole story of Del Monte tomato juice. Fresh tasting, natural tasting, and refreshing. That is just what tomato juice should be. And that is just exactly what Del Monte tomato juice is. As an awakener at breakfast time, at any time during the day, for a perfect mealtime appetizer... Del Monte tomato juice really hits the spot. Yes, there's real satisfaction in a tall, chilled glass of Del Monte tomato juice. Try it. Del Monte tomato juice is fresh tasting. Right. All the sunny, good flavor of fully vine-ripened tomatoes. Del Monte tomato juice is natural tasting. In tomato juice, just as in all Del Monte tomato products... Only the very best tomatoes are used. Del Monte tomato juice is refreshing. Yes, indeed. Downright satisfying. That's Del Monte tomato juice. Buy several cans at a time. They'll come in mighty handy. And now we take you back to Cairo and tonight's Rocky Jordan story, The Strange Death of Van Dorn. Well, Arnold Krieg held the gun, so he was calling the turns. He opened the door, jerked his bald head to motion us out. Sandra clung to my arm as we walked ahead, down the rear hotel stairs, and out the back to where a 1938 Mercedes-Benz with oversized bumpers stood waiting. Native driver sat at the wheel. We got in back, the three of us. The car jerked to a start, swung across the Bulak Bridge, and then south. Ahead, we knew a plane awaited us. Destination? Someplace outside of Egypt. I still had a lot to learn. Oh, it's sure been a hot day. Mm. Talk of the weather in desert country is poor conversation. Uh, didn't you know that, Jordan? Yeah. Only I'm wondering something. That also is wasted effort. You and your driver had a cute way of killing Van Dorn. <laughs> death is conclusive. The manner is not important. Yeah, but freezing him to death, that took some arranging. Confine your thoughts to the view, Jordan. It is your farewell to Cairo. Please, sir, Creek Bay. Yes, Gabon, what is it? In the rearview mirror, I see an automobile that follows. Are you sure? Uh, which one? The small blue automobile. It is most persistent. Ah, the blue Fiat. He's following all right. It is Hagen again. He was waiting outside my hotel. Face to the front, both of you. You know him, Creek? He came at me with a lot of excited questions after they found Van Dorn in the desert. Where does he fit? Have you quite ceased with your babbling? About the blue automobile, sir. First, we'll make sure. Gabon, turn right at the next corner. I do as you say, master. Ah, the blue automobile also turns. Uh Uh-huh. We'll put a stop to that. Faster now. 
Faster. Still he comes. Good, good. Now this next corner now, to the left. But master... Turn, Capan, turn. You see, sir, a dead end street. Eh, as I thought. Oh, swing into the alley. Quick now before he sees us. Now stop there. Hold on, please. Ah, ah, this is good. Now hold it here. Ah, it works, sir. The man in the blue automobile did not see us. He will not get far. Come on, back out now and head toward him. He has stopped, master. At the blank wall, he has stopped. Uh, so much now for our Hagen. He has indeed reached a dead end. Ahead now, Caban, and make it good. Mr. Sheldon, what are they doing? Craig, are you crazy? You can't expect... Shut up, Jordan. Now, Caban, ram his car to the wall. Craig's eyes were directly ahead, and that was my chance to grab Sandra and push her to the floor. I found the door handle and had it open as we hit. <laughs> Fiat had been crushed like an eggshell, and I was on my feet pulling Sandra with me. She was shaken, but game, and we made it to a narrow passageway that led between two buildings. About then, Craig realized we were gone. Hey, Jordan! Stop at once! We stepped it up along the passageway till I spotted an open door, and we ducked in. It turned out to be the back end of a little vegetable mart. I slammed the door, bolted it, dragged Sandra past the jabbering proprietor, out the open front, down the street to look like we were safe. I found a phone booth outside a tobacco store. While Sandra caught her breath, I made a phone call. Captain Sabaya speaking. Uh, hello, Sam. It's Rocky. Jordan, I was about to call you. Well, give up the idea and get over to the Sharia Idfu, just off El Mar. There's a smashed-up Fiat. And why should a street accident interest me? Not an accident, Sam. Murder. Continue, Jordan. Uh, you'll find him in the smashed car. An American named Milt Hagen. He was deliberately run down. By whom? guy with an egghead named Arnold Krieg. He had plenty of interest in Van Dorn, too. Sir, Jordan, you know the name of the man found in the desert. Yeah, I found out. Now, get this, Sam. Krieg's the one that killed Van Dorn. There was a deal on. Van Dorn had something to sell, and Krieg was trying to horn in. What was it, Sam? Why kill two men for it? I can only tell you who Van Dorn was, Jordan. Yeah? He was a criminal wanted by the British. A confidence man, smuggler, counterfeiter. A Dutch, yes, from South Africa. But tell me... How do you know that Craig killed Van Dorn? Because I have the girl who was with Van Dorn last night. She saw Craig and a helper dump Van Dorn into a truck and take him away. Jordan, I think you had better come to headquarters now and complete your report. Sit tight, Sam. We'll be right there. All right, let's go, Sandra. No, No, Mr. Jordan. You must let me go now. Nothing doing. Sam's waiting for us. You only want to turn me over to the police. It's for your own good. They want to clear it up for you. Please. I only want to get away before that terrible man finds me again. And just where do you think you'll go? The plane. Away from Egypt, any place. Try thinking straight, Sandra. Do you actually suppose that plane's waiting for you now? That is what Krieg said. That is all he wanted. You still don't know the man we're up against, do you? You saw what he did to Hagen? Of course I saw. Remember what he told us? He gives everybody just one chance. Our chance is just played out, unless we get to the police quick. How do you know we will ever get there? Well, we've got to take that chance. Now listen, Sandra, supposing you did get out of Egypt... Krieg wouldn't let it go at that, not after what we know. You'd never get back here and you'd never be safe. Rocky, do not let that man find me again. All right, son. We got to learn why he killed Van Dorn and see to it that he never kills anybody again. Sandra finally saw it my way. I flagged down a taxi that took us to my car, still parked near Sandra's hotel. Then we started for headquarters. It was well after sundown by now. Seemed like a long time since I'd looked down at Van Dorn's body in the desert that morning and found out how he died. We were spinning along one of the residential streets when suddenly my foot hit the brake pedal. Why are you stopping? Sandra, look at that car there in the window of that house. Does it mean anything to you? Why, the red triangle. It is just like the sign I saw on Krieg's truck. You know what the card is? An ice card. Then it was an ice truck. Of course. Why didn't I think of that before? Well, Sam's going to have to wait. We're paying a visit to the Delta Ice Company. I made a U-turn, bumped the opposite curb, and headed back the other way. And not ten minutes later, we'd found the Delta Ice plant and were driving slowly past. By now, Sandra was almost enjoying it. Those trucks lined up along the side, Rocky. Yellow with red triangle signs, including the one parked there at the dock. Yes. Someone is there. Two men. Yeah, and they're loading something on the truck fast from inside the building. 
You still with me, Sandra? Yes, Rocky, of course. Now, there's a filling station at the corner. Get down there and call Sabaya. Tell him to get here with some men the quickest way he can. Sandra hurried away, and I went back to watch. I kept close to the building. Somewhere inside, I knew Van Dorn had died the night before. I got as close to the dock as I could, hiding in the shadows. From there, I made out the two men busy at work. The guy with the bald head, Arnold Krieg, and his helper. Uh, uh, step on it, Gavan. Keep moving. Only a few more blocks of ice, Krieg. Yes, there's no time left. We're getting out of here. They were bringing blocks of ice from the building and loading them into the metal-covered truck. I figured they were trying to get away. Well, when you're in a big hurry to skip town, you don't load yourself down with 1,500 pounds of that stuff unless it's real important. So I knew those cakes of ice held the answer. They both went back inside the building. I moved in closer. In a few seconds, they were back, each dragging at a big cake of ice. Don't, don't lag up on. Ah, they are the last. Ah, this block of ice must be careful with you. It is <laughs> heavier than the others, yeah, eh? Much heavier, yes, but only we know that. Yeah, hurry now. I held it till they both got well into the truck to complete the load. Then I was silently moving up onto the dock to the back of the truck. I had one side of the metal door and swung it shut. And before they could move, the other one. The bar dropped in place and they were both locked inside. Come on. Come on, open those doors. It was not I, master, but someone outside. Who is there? Who is out there? What's the difference, Craig? You're all through. Jordan. Jordan, I warn you. Let me out of here. Yeah, any good reason why I should? Jordan, let me out of here. Handle the police get here with some hot toddies. Jordan, you you haven't called the police. Uh, keep your ear tuned. You'll hear the sirens any minute. Jordan, there isn't much time. Uh, we can make a deal. I'll give you a fourth. I'll give you half. Half of what? The diamonds. They're frozen in the ice. Diamonds, of course. No, no one will ever see them in the ice. No one will ever know. How about it, Jordan? No. Huh? What did you say? Uh, come closer. I can't hear you. You heard me. I said nothing doing. Closer. So we can talk. Closer, Jordan. You missed. But don't give up. Well, Krieg kept firing into the metal door till his clip was empty. Then I walked over and sat down on a step to wait for Sam Sobaya. I was kind of sorry I hadn't sent word for him to bring an ice pick. In just a moment, Rocky Jordan returns to conclude tonight's story. When the gang gets together for a steak fry, chances are you'll hear a lot of opinions on how it should be done. But when it comes to catsup, they'll all agree... I want a catsup with plenty of zip, real snappy tomato flavor. And that's just what you get in Del Monte catsup. Zesty, lively, real tomato flavor at its best. Yes, that wonderful flavor you find only in the best tomatoes, fully ripened on the vine. And that specially good flavor is brought to perfection with... Pineapple vinegar. Pineapple vinegar. There's the big secret of that marvelous Del Monte catsup flavor. Pineapple vinegar is superlative vinegar. It brings out all the best flavor of the other ingredients, especially tomato flavor. And only Del Monte catsup has pineapple vinegar. So remember, when you want a hearty, spiced tomato flavor, when you want a real He-Man catsup, when you want tomato flavor at its best, you want Del Monte catsup. Try Del Monte catsup soon. You'll like it. And for all its goodness, Del Monte catsup costs less than many other quality brands. Back now to Rocky Jordan for the conclusion of tonight's story. Well, Sandra's phone call brought Sabai and his men to the ice house in a hurry. We opened the doors of the truck then, and my two captives came out as meek as kittens. We all went down to headquarters, bringing the truck along, still loaded with the ice. Krieg and Gaban were booked on the charge of double murder. After questioning, Sandra went back to her hotel to unpack. And Sergeant Greco, with a couple of others, set to work chipping up the blocks of ice and melting them. 
Sam and I waited in his office till Greco finally came in. Captain Sabaya, I am now most happy to make my report. Uh, proceed, Greco. You assigned me to chop up and melt certain blocks of ice taken from the truck of the Delta Ice Works relative to the... Yes, uh, yes, 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 Greco. What did you find? In the first three blocks of ice, I found nothing. But in the fourth, I made a most remarkable discovery. In the ice, they could not be detected, but through the process of melting, I discovered this. Oh, I place them on the desk. Let me see. Diamonds, Capitan. Surely of great value. That is my discovery. Yeah, there they are, Sam. Just like Craig said. Yes, and all genuine. There is little doubt. I trust then, Capitan, that you are pleased. Just keep chopping the rest of the ice, Greco. You may find some more. Mr. Jordan, it may interest you to know that I take orders only from Captain Sabaya. Oh, yes, and uh, you take them very well, Greco. Now, when you have finished with the ice, please uh, report to me again. Your command, Capitan. <sighs> Jordan, it is growing late. I would complete my dossier on this cake case quickly. <clears throat> now, Van Dorn in Egypt illegally. With a lot of hot diamonds he'd smuggled in from South Africa. He must have had a buyer in Hagen. Correct. The American consul informs me that Hagen was a jeweler from New York. Yeah, they set up a deal. Maybe Hagen even made a first payment on the diamonds. That's when Arnold Craig got wind of it and decided to get the diamonds at any price. Craig confesses that he was manager of the ice company, obviously a front for his diamond smuggling ring. Well, that's it. He wanted the diamonds, but Van Dorn wouldn't sell, preferring to do business with Hagen. So Craig got tough, picked Van Dorn up last night, took the diamonds from him, knocked him out, and dumped him in the deep freeze room at the ice house. Ah, a real convenient way to kill him. Yeah. In the meantime, he hid the diamonds in his usual manner by freezing them in the ice until he could smuggle them out of the country. And after that, all he thought he had to do was dump Van Dorn's body out in the desert, knowing he'd thaw out and hoping nobody would know how he died. The Craig might have got away with it, too, except for what Sandra saw from her hotel window. Yes, yes, as you say. Well, that about buttons it up, Sam. Uh, I guess I'll be getting back to the tambourine. Yes, and I will be getting home... To my dear family. <clears throat> well, good night, Jordan. Good night, Sam. Oh, uh, don't forget to put out the card for the Iceman, huh? For the finest in tomato flavor, enjoy the whole family of Del Monte tomato products. Del Monte catsup and chili sauce. Del Monte tomato sauce and canned tomatoes. And Del Monte tomato juice. Remember, buy wisely. Buy for flavor. Buy Del Monte. Del Monte, the brand you trust for flavor in so many good foods. Rocky Jordan, written by Gomer Cool and Larry Roman, stars Jack Moyles in the title role with Jane Avello as Sam Sabaya, and is produced and directed by Cliff Howell, with original music composed and conducted by Richard Aron. Remember, you have a date next week at the Cafe Tambourine, run by Rocky Jordan. Same time, same station. And the story is The Big Heist. Pies and cakes that can't be beat, you want your raisins fresh and sweet. So try Del Monte Seedless Raisins. For your holiday Thanksgiving cakes, cookies, and pies, get the freshest, tastiest raisins yet. Del Monte Seedless Raisins. Larry Thor speaking. Rocky Jordan is presented over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. 